this morning we have invited you to share in, with us in the discussion on the political debacle in which we find ourselves here in Nevis. I don't think any of us in this room, if we are of an objective mind, can be comfortable with the state in which we have found ourselves after the 11th of July, that election which we are contesting as being an election which was fraudulent. For us, what, what, what is important is that we need to look back and to see that this is only the culmination of a process which has been hatched on the people of St. Kitts and Nevis over the last seven years. This is not something which just happened overnight. And we are therefore seeking to continue to sensitize the people of St. Kitts and Nevis and the world that what we have seen on the 11th of July with the irregularities in the, on the day of voting and with the unlawful actions of registration officers and a clear conspiracy of persons in high office, in government, supporters of the governments, and in the electoral office, leading up to the election in the preparation of the voters list. These are things which we must take seriously and must not see them as anything to be glossed over and to be ignored because they have impacted on the lives of the people of Nevis over the last two weeks, very seriously. This country is in a state of depression. There's a pall over St. Kitts and Nevis, especially Nevis. And if this practice which has been foisted on the people of St. Kitts and Nevis and the people of Nevis especially on leading up to the 11th of July is, con is allowed to go unchallenged and unrectified, and may that, may that not even be a word, we are going to see the end of what we know as a democratic process in St. Kitts and Nevis and in the region. Now, you look back at the events on the 11th, and these are things which we have rehashed over the last couple of weeks. And you will look at the charade of the swearing ceremony because people were not happy. You look at the massive demonstration of people of Nevis, of all walks of life, people who and may not even have been members of the CCM party, but people who felt aggrieved because they have seen over the past five years a system of government which clearly imposed hardships on the people of this country. And I don't want us to forget the hardships, the high debt, the high taxes, the, the, the high electricity costs, because those are fundamental issues to governance and to the pressure which people are now suffering. But when we look at what happened, it is clear that people of Nevis voted in large measure to remove the government from office. And whatever the irregularities which were foisted or practiced on that day and the polling stations, some of the polling stations, we are now <coughs> looking at what we consider to be a government which is not a government of the people. And I want to say that the fact that the one foreign government, the Taiwanese, have congratulated the NRP does not legitimize what happened. The fact that a, a minister of religion prayed over them does not change the wrong. The fact that Dr. Douglas came to Nevis to install his hand-picked and supportive NRP and to say, yeah, walk, pardon my, my uh, maybe I've, I've adulterated what he said, does not change the fact that there were irregularities and there were unlawful practices. And I want us to look at all those things. Sometimes we get caught with one thing and we forget that there are other things which are allied and which are as important as supportive or substantive issues. So his coming over to taunt the people of Nevis because his scheme worked is something that we must not 
ever forget. Because we look back over the history of Nevis and St. Kitts and Anguilla. And we ought not to forget that Nevis was seen as a backwaters of St. Kitts. But now that it suits the Dr. Douglas, he's coming to taunt the people of Nevis because he, by supporting the unlawful acts, by giving succor and encouragement to the supervisor of election, that the supervisor of elections are not to take the directions of the electoral commission when they say that the names of persons, more than 250 persons, must remain on the list, tells me that he is part of the whole process of disenfranchising those hundreds of citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis. And I want to say this, that when our own elected persons, our own citizens, because the Prime Minister is like all of us, choose to disenfranchise his own people, his own citizens, his own brothers and sisters, it is worse than the apartheid system which was practiced in South, America, South, Africa, South Africa. And I do not make any apologies for that, because there in South Africa it was the white suppressing the blacks. Now it is our own people suppressing ourselves. And I want us to look at that in its entirety. Now that we have this charade, and I said there's a pall over St. Kitts and Nevis, what we are now seeing is the true colors of the Nevis Reformation Party. Persons have received letters dismissing them summarily from their jobs. And last night, well, we've heard of one lady from Bath, and we may hear more specifics about that who has been terminated, no reason given. What we need to satisfy is that this victimization and termination of persons from their jobs simply because the NRP leaders believe that they may have supported the opposition, our party, the CCM party, has to be cause for concern. And we need not take it lightly and try to be fobbed off by what they say that CCM in 92 did it. We did not victimize anybody in 92. And I want to make that very clear. If someone does not perform his duty and has either to be transferred or to be asked to retire, that is not victimization. And I want to make that very, very clear. Because we get caught up again with a statement which is being bandied about that with the removal of names that CCM objected to people as well. And that does not justify what happened in this election nor what happened leading up to this election where more than 250 persons had their names removed from the list without due process. And I go back to the fact that it is in fact a tantamount and perhaps worse than the apartheid which was practiced in South Africa. Now, we look at where we are as a country. And I want to say to you that this issue of the fraudulence of the elections has reached far and wide. And people are looking at us, the people of Nevis, especially for some kind of resolution in this matter. And we need not feel that we don't have support. We have support. The support may not be as open and as full as we would like, but there is support. When the people of this country are told that one person, because it was done by one person, could, by the stroke of a pen, take your name from the voters list. It says that we have no regard for law and order. We have no regard for the constitutional rights of the people and no regard for the constitution which governs the process of elections and people's behavior in our country. Now, this practice is the kind of action which in other countries would have led to serious disruption. And it is a testament to the 
resilience and the, the strength of the CCM leadership that we have voted that. But we are now moving to another level and we have to exhaust all the <coughs> avenues available to us. But this matter of victimization of workers where a professional or senior surgeon was told that he has to put them a vehicle which he was using for the performance of his duty while an activist of the NRP has a government vehicle for the past five years and has it parked up somewhere not accessible to the government. That is what we are talking about as the corruptive practices in which we have seen the NRP engage and which, in which they have been encouraged and supported by the action of persons in the electoral office and with the overt, because the Prime Minister said that the supervisor of election was right in disobeying or not obeying the di dictates of the Electoral Commission. So we have that conspiracy. But we find our persons are being victimized. Let me say this, that our party will stand full square with anyone who is victimized. And if it means that we have to demonstrate again and stand outside government headquarters and all the government offices, time after time, it must stop. Because we don't know who's going to be next. We don't know who's going to be next. But we are detecting, again, the kind of misinformation which is saying that CCM had a list of persons who were going to be dismissed so that they can cover their diabolical and evil scheme of threatening, ruling the country by fear and dismissing persons so that persons who need to work to look after their families are put on the bread line. My fellow citizens and members of the press, we want you to take this matter seriously and I've thrown in not just the victimization or the corrupt practices and the, the fraudulent activity on the electoral front, but a number of other things which must go together so that we can have justice and righteousness restored to this country. Thank you very much, members of the press.